Hey, it's uh, Chase Cunningham or Dr. Cunningham, Dr. Trust. Anyway, whatever. Let's talk about important stuff. Uh, I'm here with a good friend of mine, Ofer Klein, CEO of Rico. Give a quick rundown on you and what you do at Rico. Thanks. First, thanks for having me. Great to see you again. <laughs> I'm uh, Ofer Klein, co-founder and CEO of uh, Rico AI. What we do is uh, SaaS security and AI governance. Basically, we help CISOs and security teams allow the business to run much faster, utilizing AI, using SaaS in a much more secure way in one hand and much faster way in the other. So you guys were, I would say, very early to market. I mean, we talked about years ago about this and you guys were just starting like day one on we're going to solve this AI problem before AI was the problem. But now it is the problem. Like, how is the market looking at this currently? Yeah, so actually it's really funny because uh, we started the company as Rico.ai. Two years before AI became cool with the jokes of uh, AI is Jeff's pre presentation, machine learning is code, the co-founder is a PhD in AI. We have a bunch of PhDs in the company. And the goal was early days of, of COVID, it's becoming something that people are using at home. One day AI is going to be infused in SaaS, which means AI is a service. And that day, it means that SaaS is going to be everywhere, exploding, it's going to be very easy to use. That was the long-term vision. And then we implemented, we call it the heartbeat, a graph that connects identities, applications, and data. And we implemented and waited for AI to become something. And then it happened. ChatGPT went live. We were extremely happy and nothing happened with the security part. We talked to CISO and I said, don't worry. I'm just going to block this new wave and I'm going to be home at 5 p.m. playing with my kids. And guess what? That's what they did. For the first nine, 10 months of AI trying to penetrate, it was mostly blocked. Just recently, nine, 10 months ago, we heard from most of the security teams. They got a phone call from the CEO saying, please open it today. Oof. Turn AI on. 80% of my business need to run on AI. This is an accelerator for my business. And it became mandatory. And now you have to secure it. And it's, yeah, the, the, car, the horse is out of the barn. And it's like, let's shut that door. So you guys just recently published this, uh, the 2025 State of Shadow AI report. I want to pick a couple things out here. So... Number one, the threat is real and it's massive. Uh, and here's some three applications. Jivers, right? Jivers, uh, Happy Talk, Stability AI, receive failing grades, mean that they lack fundamental security controls like RBAC, MFA, and audit logging. That seems like a real giant problem. How common is that? So it's very common. The biggest uh, uh, question we ask every time we meet uh, uh, new companies is, do you know every AI, every SaaS tool, every plugin in your environment? We never heard yes, because it's, it's basically impossible to do it manually. Mm. So it starts with those tools that are, you know, tools that you don't want to use, but it's even the baseline of, I'll give an example, 400 reports created on Salesforce in a minute. The immediate response by the company was bullshit. Nobody can create so many reports. Someone connected ChatGPT over the weekend, exploding 400 reports for the entire company. ChatGPT is fine. Salesforce is fine. But the combination between them now became extremely risky. And that, yeah, because I I was looking at Jell's graph the other day, and you know, the the con the contextual picture is super crazy because you see this thing out here, and then you see the core of the business over here, and there's this like evil trail of connections that occur to get towards whatever. And I was talking with one of your sales engineers, and it was like, yeah, that's the real problem is it's none of this is bad. It's that all this stuff is talking to itself, and no one knows about it, and that's how it's being used for bad purposes. Which most out of all the companies you've put in. How many of them have ever had 100% understanding and knowledge of what's going on in their system? I think 60% was the highest so far. Mm. It's extremely, you know, it's literally impossible to extremely difficult unless you try to block. And even those companies that block, healthcare, pharma, banks, insurance companies, every time we find things that they don't know about. And that's risk. That's a huge risk. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, you don't have the luxury anymore to block it. Because if you block it, the business will stop and then your competitors are going to run faster than me. I think for me, like the the one thing in this report that I was like, there's there's the the sound bite, right? It's number two, is uh, organizations are choosing AI tools uh, like they choose consumer apps, which is a bad idea, based on features and convenience, not security. And that's that's something people have done for a long time. But the scale of this is the real issue. Yeah, you know, it was one thing it was one. Now we're... And the scale is really, really interesting because you see tools that didn't exist a month or two months ago, and now half of your um, dev org is using them. Mm. So it's not like Salesforce service now. The big tools, they don't move. I know them for many years. I can validate the vendor. We believe 80% of the software that is going to be used in the next five years in the enterprise was not developed yet. 
So it's continuously going to develop into something new, agenti. This is only for developers, only for marketing, only for sales. People are start using it and good luck trying to figure out who's doing what and what is the level. And none of those people that are doing that, they're just, number one, a lot of people are just trying to justify their existence in the job market now. None of them are sitting there going like, well, how could I possibly secure this? Yeah. They're just going, cool, I could use it for X, Y, and Z. So everybody's talking about the bad actors, the attackers that are there and they're risky. 95% of the problem are you and me trying to do the best in our work because I know I need to run faster using AI. And I just say, yes, 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 connect to everything. And then it explodes in the bank. Yeah, the, uh, the days of anybody even thinking about reading a Yule are pretty much over. Uh, so la la last one I really think is worth driving here is the open AI monopoly. And this is not a knock on open AI. It's just a statement of fact. Open AI commands 53% of all shadow AI usage across organizations, uh, processing data from over 10,000 enterprise users in this study. This unprecedented concentration means half of all AI related risk flows through a single platform. That is concerning. Uh, what was the report that just came out recently where if you put your stuff into chat GPT, it's indexable by Google, like no privacy much, yeah. I mean, yeah. but how, how define the problem there? So you see, you start seeing more hubs. So chat GPT obviously is one of them. Anthropic is another one. All of those MCPs are becoming hubs and it's extremely hard to secure them, especially because there's so much value there. If I can do my job in one hour versus eight hours, of course, I'm going to use the tool. And what we see in big companies, the shadow AI part is that when they wake up, you have hundreds of users already. You cannot block it anymore because you take an entire department, you take them out. So how can you be proactive versus reactive? And the only way we find that is actually acceptable, number one, you need to discover them in real time, proactively across everywhere. We discovered today more than 60,000 apps classified the AI, the gen AI, Figma IPO. Figma one day started to use AI. By the way, I'm here, I'm using AI, good luck. You need to know that in order to secure it. Number two, you need to secure not only the big platforms, but also the long tail. So we have the largest coverage of app integrations in the market. You guys like 200 plus now. We have now more than 200, correct. And we're adding two to three a week. Soon it's gonna be two a day with the new technology that we are developing now and testing. The only way to secure the long tail is if you can integrate within hours every new tool that comes in order to secure it. And the last part, by the way, as a CISO, I don't have enough people. They're not trained enough and they don't have enough hours in the day. If you can alleviate this pain, please, tier one analyst in minutes over Rico versus tier three analyst within hours uh, with other tools. So the, the other tangent on this, I, I just want to get your thoughts on quickly is like the the use of AI applications at home, talking to corporate back end, because one of your engineers was running me through that too. And I, I tell people all the time in the Cunningham household, like we cheat to win. My kids, I, I bought them a license for stuff because I want them to use it. I, I don't know if they did it to you and where you grew up, but where I grew up, like they, when I was taking algebra, they said, you can't use a calculator. Yeah. I was like, what the, so my kids, we, we're going to cheat, but there's always the risk of that stuff they're doing at home, talking and connecting to other things out there. So is that, is that a viable concern? I think it's here. Uh, if you're concerned about it, it's your problem because it's here to stay and it's just going to grow. It's like the early days of navigating with maps. We're both unfortunately old enough <laughs> to have navigated with maps, yeah. real maps, you know? and then GPS came. And if you don't use it, you're just going to get lost. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. If you're not going to use AI, you're going to get lost. You're going to be slow. You're not going to be as efficient as your counterpart or competitor. So the baseline value of AI is here to stay and grow. Now you have two options to ignore it and get hacked or to endorse it. And you need something that will help you to run faster. If you're going to tell any one person, listen to this, to the three people that do listen to it, like, what do we do about like, what, what, if you were to say like, go, please do this thing, what would it be? So number one, get visibility, better understand what's happening in your environment. And visibility means every app, every user, what has AI, what is the level of the risk? That's the number one. If you do not have this, you cannot take decisions, you cannot prioritize. Number two, after prioritization, you should understand what is good and what is bad. And what is good for you, then go and implement it and push it to the business. Because otherwise, if you're perceived as a blocker, nobody will talk to you, which means they will use shadow without you. The only way we see that the most forward thinker CISOs and practitioners, they try to run as fast as the business. And that's the only way. So start, get going, don't wait, like do something. Don't 
sit around and cross your fingers and hope. Hope is not a strategy. Yeah. We, we just onboarded a, a large company a week ago. I asked the CISO, why did you sign with Rico? And usually the answers were, I need to secure this. I had a bridge, which is something that is, um, you know, uh, on the spot. Basically, he said, this is a business enabler solution for me. I need to run faster. And this is the only way that I can do it. Running faster is a good place if you can run the right way. If you can do it securely. Yeah. I mean, smart, safe, secure, all those good things. All right. Well, folks are looking to solve this problem. Reach out to Rico. Ofer, thanks for coming on, man. Thank you. Pleasure.